thanks for sticking around for the last lightning talk. Uh, so my name is Emily Goldman. I also work for Beta NYC, like my colleague Lindsay just talked about. So you've heard the background about Beta NYC. We're currently based in the office of the Manhattan Borough President, and our main drive is to help community boards make meaningful, useful um, use of open data and civic technology. Uh, along the way, we train a class of CUNY undergraduates every year, which is a lot of fun. Um, so one of the things that has come up, come out of our work recently, um, is called Tenant Map, a tool for housing transparency and reform. Um, All right, so Tenants Map is a map that we it essentially focus on, focuses on and joins two important housing-related data sets from New York City. The first uh, is the base map here, which represents parcels across the city that contains rent-stabilized apartments. The second uh, is a uh, a subset of 311 service request data that relate to housing issues that people are experiencing in their own homes, like lack of heat and hot water, plumbing issues, paint plaster, mold, unsanitary conditions, things like this. So what we've done here by joining these two data sets is pointing to the volume of these housing-related 311 service requests in these sensitive, rent-stabilized buildings and apartments. The project actually has a really interesting development process that I want to speak about for a few minutes here. I think it really showcases the collaborative and um, iterative nature of this whole civic tech and open data movement that we're all part of in New York City. So um, actually it started four years ago, um, my involvement in it at least, um, when I was doing my fieldwork research in Brooklyn and uh, there was this lack of transparency around which buildings even were officially rent stabilized. Um, so that led to my very first civic hacking project where I scraped using a program called Tabula um, these PDFs of rent stabilized buildings that are available on the Rent Guidelines board website and turned it into a map. Um, these PDFs are like hundreds of pages long, they're semi-alphabetically organized, semi-numerically organized, they're a mess to go through. Putting that data on a map was very useful for the community organizations that I was associating with when I was doing my field work. Um, fast forward a few years later and we were able to like, battle-proof that scrape, make it much more robust um, using volunteer assistance that we met through um, the NYC School of Data, which is an annual event that Beta NYC puts on every March, so keep in mind that coming up. Um, then through our work at the Manhattan Borough President's Office, uh, community board members um, started to approach us incrementally about this lack of transparency around housing data. And it was something that was very important for them to help their constituents. Um, and one member uh, of the community board actually kind of brainstormed this idea of let's see, let's, let's see that those data sets together. Let's see the 311 service request that we know that tenants are using when they are experiencing problems in their homes. And let's see that joined with uh, these sensitive rent stabilized apartments throughout the city. And um, then that step was greatly facilitated by the very recent addition of a BBL field within the 311 surface request data. So prior to that, it would have been harder to do that join, at least in such a visually friendly way that we have going on here with the map. Um, there was also the desire to see not only the parcels that contain rent stabilized units, but also which, how many units had been lost over time. That's another scrape data set by civic hacker John Krause. Some of you may or may not have heard of that, but it was a big deal when that scrape came through. Um, hundreds of thousands of pages of tax bills were scraped to get this information. Um, also available at the BBL level, so uh, that data is also incorporated into this tool. Um, when we hired Lindsay in March, um, she helped turn the tool into, from a vision into this reality built in Cardo, and we're currently continuing to work on it, developing a script um, to generate monthly reports, and things like this. And the list goes on, there's hopefully more to keep doing. Um, 
So when you look at the map, um, basically here, this is showing you uh, to, uh, 2054 Broadway. That's actually the address of the very community board member who approached us about this project. Um, and as you can see in dark red, uh, she was certainly uh, understood what was going on in her building. Um, this is a very high volume through one service request building um, that's rent stabilized, or where there are many rent stabilized units in it. Um, so you click on one of these parcels and you get information um, about the volume of human one service requests uh, as well as um, the, the data on rent stabilization from these two scrapes. Um, and one other thing that Beta NYC is trying to work a lot on, and hopefully this will resonate with some people here, is to bring together um, civic tech tools that various organizations and governmental agencies have made and look at them together. Um, so this is one example just looking at two of the tools that we've made, but we also really love to bring in tools that others have made. So for instance, now's a perfect time to make a plug for an, another amazing housing civic tech tool called DAPMAP, created by the Association for Housing and Neighborhood Development. Um, that tool is like way even deeper and more complicated than ours, but it's great and very important for tenant organizers on the ground. And, um, and we want to just keep working together and networking these sort of tools and building weaves so that this information um, becomes all the more useful for the people who need it. So thank you.